then coming to the management now remember the first thing is that you have to keep on keep a watch on what is happening with the protein urea now it is very costly to keep on doing the protein uh, 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 creatinine ratio or 24 hours urine protein which is not practical as well so we do what is called as daily urine dipstick test we have to keep on doing it every day to quantify uh, to look at the uh, protein urea we have to do a mild salt restriction it is important uh, because the edema will increase if the child takes too much of salt they we do not require a fluid restriction in the child that is one of the misconception of the nephrotic syndrome remember minimal change disease or the normal nephrotic syndrome we do not require a, a fluid restriction the child can take good amount of fluid remember this child are usually hypovolemic although they look edematous but it is the underlying uh, 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 circulating blood volume which is low usually it is the interstitial edema you require to restrict the fluid only in case there is an associated features of a congestive cardiac failure or there is a massive pleural effusion which is associated with pulmonary edema only then you require to restrict the fluid or there is a features of renal failure then you require to restrict the fluid otherwise you do not require uh, fluid restriction now remember the the best treatment for edema is to st start the steroids uh, which we'll be coming to in a later slide but apart from the steroids the other treatment for edema is to use an iv albumin and diuretic but usually this is required only in the cases where the children do not respond to the initial first line treatment of the steroids or the there is a severe edema which is causing them to have a respiratory or cardiac compromise the treatment that we can do is to give iv albumin to increase the albumin and then give diuretics to remove the edema we can use uh, in diuretics we can use either plain furosemide but remember furosemide is a very strong diuretic and can cause uh, your renal um, uh, your electrolyte abnormalities or we can use furosemide associated with amiloride now coming to the minimal change disease now the initial management i said is to st start the steroid but remember the caution is that we should actually rule out uh, the infection before we start the steroid in case there is an associated sepsis or there is an associated uh, infection this can flare up especially your tuberculosis so always actively look for the infection rule it out before you start the steroids now the steroids that we give are usually used for uh, uh, the continuous uh, uh, steroid usage we start as 2 mg per kg per day we use it for 6 weeks and then we shift over to either 1.5 or we can continue with 2 mg per kg per day itself as an alternate day there are two uh, uh, uh guidelines one says uh, after 6 weeks of continuous steroids you uh, give it alternate day for 4 weeks or you give it over 6 weeks either of this is fine depending on which guidelines you are following and we usually uh, continue this and then slowly taper it over a period of 6 uh, weeks after we have made it the alternate day now this is the one episode of uh, nephrotic syndrome especially your minimal change which requires this treatment and most of the children they respond well to this uh, and they go in for the negative uh, dipstick test which is called as remission in but sometimes the minimal change disease the children might develop because of any stress disease or the uh, the primary disease itself they develop the uh, subsequent episodes of this protein urea so we have to keep on checking the dipstick test in case there is a subsequent episodes then we again restart the uh, 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 steroids again with the dose of 2 mg per kg per day and we use it till the urine is clear for three consecutive days and then we continue it for alternative day for one month and then we uh, wean them out so this is for the subsequent episodes so the first treatment remember is very important that we use 2 mg per kg per day for 6 weeks follow it up with 1.5 or 2 mg itself per kg per day on alternate day for 6 weeks this is the treatment of the steroids 
now uh, the, if the children do not respond to this uh, that is either their protein urea does not come down or if it comes down it becomes a negative taste uh, once you have you have uh, uh, given the steroids and the dipstick is showing for three consecutive days there is no protein urea then we say the child has gone into remission then we can stop the steroids but either uh, while st after stopping the steroids or while tapering the dose of steroids if the child develops the protein urea which is going up then it is called as a relapse now in case there is a relapse i'll be coming to the definition of relapse so when we call something as a frequent relapse or an infrequent relapse frequent relapses if we are getting three cases three times or more than three times in a year whenever we try to taper the steroids or stop the steroids then it is called as a frequent relapse if we have a frequent relapse then we have to continue the low dose steroid therapy till we get the remission of the proteins along with that we might have to start on the other medications the other medications that we use are uh, levamisole uh, cyclophosphamide we use calcium urine inhibitors like your cyclosporin or tracolimus or we start on mycophenolate uh, mofetil which is called as mmf now usually these are the uh, the drugs which are required in a non minimal change nephrotic syndrome or uh, they are required if, along with the secondary disease but sometime in the minimal change disease almost 10% of the children might uh, require these uh, uh, medications now remember these are very strong medications they have their own uh, 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 side effects now uh, i am not going to go deep into the uh, the dosage which are available in any good test books or they are available with uh, any of the uh, pediatric nephrologists now remember in case if the child requires any treatment which goes beyond steroids then it's always better to involve a nephrologist and uh, continue this medications under their care now i just want you to highlight the few of the side effects with these medications which is important as a pediatrician sometime the children might have been started on these medications and they will come back to us for uh, the diseases i mean uh, the follow up so we should know what are the common side effect of these four medications because these are the four medications which have been used commonly so if we are using a child is using levamisole the commonest side effect that we see is leukopenia the child can develop a flu like uh, symptoms but that occurs in the initial starting of levamisole in the first uh, one week to uh, two to three weeks they can develop liver toxicity and most importantly they might develop a seizure so if there's a child who had a febrile seizures or an epilepsy then this child should be avoided using the levamisole the cyclophosphamide the commonest side effect is leukopenia and this usually develops uh, a 2 to 3 months after starting cyclophosphamide so this child should be followed up with a complete blood picture a little bit more frequently starting from 10 to 2 uh, 10 days to 2 weeks after starting of your cyclophosphamide the other common side effect which develops with cyclophosphamide is hemorrhagic cystitis which requires a lot of fluids to flush out uh, the hemorrhagic cystitis and also to stop temporarily cyclophosphamide to decrease this uh, uh, hematuria which comes because of uh, uh, the gross uh, hematuria which comes because of the hemorrhagic cystitis they can be associated alopecia skin rash and uh, nausea with cyclophosphamide cycloserine that is cin inhibitor we can develop hypertension so it is always important to check the blood pressure in each setting that you are seeing the child if the child is on cycloserine the other complication that we see is a nephrotoxicity so if the child is on cycloserin for more than 6 months to a year then we have to keep on doing the uh, bu and that is one urea creatinine or urea and creatinine in the children to rule out any nephrotoxicity which can occur in case if it is there then cycloserin should be uh, uh, cyclosporin should be stopped in this children Hy gum hypertrophy and hirsutism can also occur in this cases then the last one is your mmf usually what we see is gastroenteritis that is your ga bad gastritis or a diarrhea they can also develop leukopenia otherwise it is a safe drug to use so these are the common side effects of these drugs this we should know as a pediatrician otherwise the dosage and how long we give and uh, how do we uh, shift over from one drug to another is uh, to be decided by the nephrologist 
Now, what complications do we see in a case of nephrotic syndrome? Uh, the commonest is your hypovolemic crisis. Now, this can occur because of the severe uh, hypoalbuminemia. So in case the child has the features of shock, as I told you, we look at the echo, we look at the abdominal ultrasound to look at the IVC diameter. We see the tachycardia in case that is there. The child will require IV fluids, might require albumin or plasma to manage this shock-like syndrome. They might develop a pre-renal failure, which again requires a good fluid management uh, to get back to the normal volumic status and which takes care of the pre-renal failure. These children are hypercoagulable. They might develop thrombosis. So we have to be very careful, especially any child who develops a sudden abdominal pain, sudden headache. We have to think about uh, or an altered sensorium. Think about the cerebral sinus thrombosis, think about the mesenteric uh, 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 thrombosis, which might cause the severe abdominal pain. The children can also develop ascites, and this ascites can lead on to the hernia, especially we see an umbilical or the inguinal hernia, which can come in the children. They can develop malnutrition. This is again is because of the edema, which causes uh, the children to lose their appetite, and they develop this malnutrition. Infection is very important, especially your peritonitis. A child with nephrotic syndrome on the steroids or of the steroids suddenly develop and severe abdominal pain. Think about the uh, subacute bacterial peritonitis, the one of the commonest side effect or the complications. And if it is present, do an uh, urgent ultrasound. We might have to do a, a diagnostic tap to look at if there's a, some fluid there and treat the child aggressively because this can lead on to the sepsis. Uh, very quickly. The other thing is a pneumonia or the cellulitis can develop or the skin um, diseases like your necrotizing fasciitis can develop. So these are the children who have to be treated. Remember, the children who have secondary type of nephrotic syndrome, who have a low complement level, the, who have autoimmune disease, they are a little bit more prone to develop uh, the sepsis. But having said that, any nephrotic syndrome, a child on steroids, is a high risk of developing a sepsis. So any child who comes with a fever or comes with a tachycardia, tachypnea, breathlessness, abdominal pain, um, these children have to be worked up very diligently for the, the sepsis. Look, at, uh, look out for that. Uh, uh, start the antibiotic. Uh, uh, properly depending on the site of infection. The other thing is hyperlipidemia. These children can develop a cardiovascular risk because of the hyperlipidemia, which is not very common in the pediatric age group as compared to the adults. Now, to manage the complication, in case there's a shock, we usually treat them with 20% albumin or plasma, or to start with, we give the saline also, try to get the uh, edema down, try to get uh, the oncotic pressure in the circulating volume a little bit up. This actually pulls the fluid from the interstitial space back to the uh, circulating volume and decreases the features of shock. In case if the child had developed uh, uh, thrombotic symptoms, then the child should be started after treatment has to be started on prophylactic aspirin. In case there's an infection, I told you, we have to aggressively treat the infection, which is one of the causes of mortality. In case there's a long continuity, then the child should be started on these meters. In case the child is having a severe hyperlipidemia, then they require a lipid lowering. So, in pediatric,